So for 1a, if the point ab is on the graph, um, then the point on the inverse would be ba. So that means if for b, this is the point 3, 7, so on the inverse, you're going to get the point 7, 3, so this evaluates to 3. The graphs are symmetric to the line y equals x. The range of f is the same as the domain of its inverse, and the domain of the original is the same as the range of the inverse. Give a numerical example showing why. If f equals x squared, then the inverse is not 1 over x squared. Okay, so let's x be, okay, let's choose 4. That means f of 4 is 16. So when I plug 16 into g, if they're inverses, I should get 4. Well, 1 over 16 squared, that's 1 over 256, that is not 4. Okay, so we'll let's, we can do something similar for b. Let's x be 2. So when we plug that into f, we get 6. So technically when I plug 6 into g, I should get 2, but instead we get negative 18, which is not 2. All right, for 3. These functions are inverses of each other. So for a, we start with x, then it got multiplied by 3, and then we subtract 2. So go backwards, we're going to add 2, divide by 3. So that is x plus 2, all divided by 3. Okay, so then for b, we start with x, then it got cubed, then multiplied by 3, then add 9. So backwards, subtract 9, divide by 2, cube root. So that is x minus 9, divided by 2, all cube rooted. Okay, so for c, we started with x, multiplied it by 5, and then in the cube root, so backwards, we're going to take to the power of 3 and then divide by 5. So that is x to the power of 3 divided by 5. Okay, for d, put that over here. Um, when you have an exponential, 10 to the x, we know the inverse is a logarithm. So, to write that as a log, it's going to be log base 10 of x. We don't write the 10, because the most common base of the logarithm is 10. We don't write it. Same thing for f. If we start with a logarithm, ln of x, that invisible base here is an e, so the inverse is e to the x. Sketch the inverse, the graph to the right. So what I like to do is write some key coordinates. I'm going to make this bigger so it's easier to see. So let's do negative 5, negative 8. Um, negative 3, 0. Oh, you know what? I missed that good one there. Let's add that in there. That's negative 4, negative 4, negative 1. Then we get negative 2, 1, and then negative 1, 8. So the inverse is going to be negative 8, negative 5, negative 1, negative 4, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 2, and then 8, negative 1. And there's the graph of the inverse. And then similarly for b, our endpoint is 0, 0. 
Here's another good one at 1, 3. Mm, 4, 6. Here. And then we'll do 7, 8. So the inverse, 0, 0. 3, 1. 6, 4. And 8, 7. And there's our graph. Okay, for five, this is profit and lemonade glasses. So part A is really asking us to find the inverse. So I want to do glasses of P. So taking that backwards, we're going to add 18 and divide by 2. So if she made $32, how many glasses did she sell? That's 25 glasses. Remember, be precise, label your answers. Another part of precision is make sure you have correct function notation. Okay, for six, we have a function that is scores based on the number of correct items. So for A, writing the inverse. So we started with the correct items times two and a half and then added 200. So going backwards, Take the scores minus 200 and divide by 2.5. So if we got a score of 325, how many items did the student get correct? So we're going to plug that in. Now these questions, they don't have that calculator symbol here, so you can use your calculator for this arithmetic. Um, to simplify, we're going to get 50 items. All right, explain why the inverse is not a function. Um, looking at the graph, I can see, so based on the graph, I can see multiple y values with more than one x value. So if you look at this, um, Let's say this y value here of 3. So here are two points where the y value is 3. So when you have your inverse, you're going to get a point at 3, negative 1, and at 3, 2. So your inverse won't be a function because you have multiple, you have a repeated point here when x is, when the, on the inverse, that x is 3. Okay, so if the domain is restricted to x is greater than or equal to 1, so that's here and this way, would the inverse be a function? Yes, the inverse will be a function if x is greater than or equal to 1 because each y only has one x value when the domain is restricted.